<laughs> in April 2015, the press's contribution to the national debate came under intense scrutiny when the then Sun columnist, Katie Hopkins, said she would use gunships to stop migration and compared immigrants to cockroaches. We're looking at a, a period where immigration became a huge topic for the press and it was immediately very popular. Why do you think that is? I think two things will always sell newspapers. One of them is Maddie McCann and one of them is migrants. Did you read the piece that Claude Blake wrote? Yes. I liked the idea of this historical reflection, but it feels so modern, it feels completely contemporary. I mean, apart from the wording and the linguistics around it, which I sort of enjoy, it feels like a hugely contemporary piece. Um, you used the term cockroaches in a piece about migrants. Blake didn't go that far. Is that something that you still stand by? Mm. If you pick out one word out of a 800 word, I don't know, 600 word, whatever piece... It's quite a strong word. It could, probably could stand alone. We were always taught that there was only a few people that could withstand, or a few animals or few creatures that could withstand a nuclear holocaust. So I was talking about the enduring nature of migrants able to cross the Mediterranean, and I used the term cockroach. I mean, your language, you say the linguistics have changed since Blake. In yes. fact, you used the same words, festering sores. That's what he says, that's what I you did, say. I did say to you I admired his language. Yes. I mean, you're proud of that, are you? I think... Uh, I am honest about the fact that there's lots of London, there are lots of places where migrants live that aren't pretty. Those DOS houses, those mildew-infested places with 14 people in a room designed for two. I'd love it if you came there and tried to tell me that wasn't a festering sore. You know, well, you that could is say festering. it's an offence against humanity, it's time we did something about it. I don't it's feel the need to do anything about it. Country. Yeah, we, well, the thing I would do about it, of course, is have our borders, you know, such that we don't have 600,000 people here that are here illegally. That seems a nonsense to me. You referred to a plague of feral humans. I mean, are they all feral? I mean, is it actually a plague? Aren't they just a group of people? It's because you look at them and think, you are nothing like me. You don't understand how our culture works. You think it's OK to molest the young boy in a swimming pool. You think it's OK you say to you've rape met women. these people. Haven't you met any asylum seekers who you've talked to and thought you're an ordinary human being? You're not a feral human being? I think these individuals from some of these cultures they come from are feral humans. I stand by those words, I use those words explicitly. I think I reflect the national conversation and I don't see that as hatred and I don't see that as distrust or mistrust. I see that as people wanting to protect the thing they love. And, you know, this would be an interesting thing about... But do they do that by hating the other? I no, mean, no, I don't see that. No, I'm just all. reading your no, stuff no, thinking this is... This is filled with hate, isn't it? A lot of it. You, no. you really hate this, you hate that, you hate... It's part no, of I the, the very... shock jock no. genre, isn't it? If someone's been around for 12 years or so, speaking their version of truth, with a now massive audience, there's a reason that that gains support, and it isn't to do with speaking hate or whipping up frenzies or or making people anti a yellow peril using your words uh, it's because there is a sense that there is a whole world of stuff we can no longer say and it's because there's a whole world of state media that appear to be very biased in a particular direction it's because of people like you that there are people like me and I've always said this that that you guys the liberal elite in London are responsible for me. You are Dr Frankenstein and I am your monster. <laughs>